last we spoke, Kirk was getting medication from Dr. Boo as well as Dr. Schulenberg, and according to his phone records and UTC time, that would have been 7.46 a.m. Um, and about 8.03 a.m. with Schulenberg. So with all this drug seeking in the morning, the police investigation still claims that the prescription was written at 1.30 p.m. This is interesting. You see here they wrote, Dr. Schulenberg also issued a prescription to Kurt for uh, 414 at 1330 hours. That would be 130 in the afternoon. But as we already discussed, if these are being deciphered in UTC time, this 103 p.m. phone call would actually be 803 a.m. Um, so even if the prescription was written at 130, Dr. Schulenberg wrote that Kirk would have to pick that prescription up in person because it was such a rare request and he had never written for narcotics for him before. Again, 15 plus years, very rare request he needs to come and pick up. So if in fact Dr. Schulenberg wrote that prescription at 1.30 in the afternoon and we take into consideration that his office address is either 15450 uh, Highway 7 in uh, Minnetonka or the Excelsior address, I'm not sure whichever one they're talking about, but they're supposed to be talking about the Highway 7 in Minnetonka. Consider that Sarah Boo's office is, and the airport are both in St. Paul. So even if you think Kirk could accomplish all that by himself and board that plane in St. Paul at 2.32, consider this. Why would he be seen picking up a prescription in Bloomington, which is nowhere near St. Paul? So here is the Minnetonka address, Elizabeth Boo's address, and I put them on a map for you. Here's Paisley Park in the red. You've got the doctor's office in Minnetonka. You've got St. Paul over here with uh, Dr. Boo, and yet the pharmacy is in Bloomington. So take a look at that again. So if Kirk was contacting the doctors in the morning at 8.03, then he could have had someone step in for him as a look-alike like Renville or one of the other Julius Omar look-alikes um, because there's no way he could make it to all these places in the time that they're saying unless he was flying and still getting on a plane at 2.32. So the same day the prescriptions are written and picked up Kirk Johnson allegedly boards a plane departing at 2.32. Interestingly the detective writes the day the Percocet was issued it was picked up at a Bloomington pharmacy it doesn't say who picked up the pharmacy uh, but here's what it says you guys um, it's all about how they write it because it's the trickery. So he received the first video was from a Walgreens located at 7845 Portland Avenue in the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. The date of this video is 4-14-16, the date the Percocet was filled and issued to Kirk Johnson. Very tricky wording, you guys. The date the Percocet was filled and issued to Kirk Johnson. They didn't say that Kirk Johnson picks it up, but they just said it was issued and that it was Percocet. Okay? Um via Dr. Schulenberg for Prince. The second video is from a Walgreens located at County Road, Minnetonka, Minnesota on 420, 2016. In this video, Kirk Johnson fills prescriptions during Prince's doctor visit with Dr. Schulenberg and um, at uh, 549 and is by himself and then at the same Walgreens in Minnetonka an hour and a half later, whatever, at 704. But my point is why on the 14th would Kirk or anyone be at the Bloomington Pharmacy when Minnetonka is there, Paisley Park is there, St. Paul is there, and Dr. Boo is there, and there's Bloomington. If you've watched my videos before, you know that we disclosed that the largest fentanyl bust in the United States ever was in the city of Bloomington, and the identity in the trailer shows that there is a Rogers Nelson that lives in Bloomington as well. But I'm going to stay on track here. I believe that this is where Renville Wellington uh, was brought in. And like I said, the thicker bodyguard that you see in the CCTV videos. Um, because when you look at the Go phone records, I need to introduce you to Renville real quick. Um, he's an alleged bodyguard from Canada. 
on 6-9-15, that was a week before the secret White House concert, um, Renville ascertained a gold phone in his name, and, and here's that proof, when Renville Wellington, 6-9-2015. Um, as I explained, I believe he was playing a lookalike for Kirk. Uh, when you review the phone records between the two of them, all of the phone records that they show for Renville revolve around the pertinent investigation dates of the file. So I'll show you what I mean. On 3-23 of 2016, the K-hole, uh, they had a remembrance of Christ, Christ remembrance they call it, in which Larry Graham said that Prince flew back from Canada um, in order to attend it with him. Um, now you can see also on the 14th and 15th, if you review this, that the lines were also very busy. So we have the remembrance, the 14th and 15th of the landing, the concert. Now what's interesting is the 14th and 15th, Renville Wellington's phone um, is constantly busy, and then it goes quiet at 1.56 p.m. on the 14th, with, which would be consistent with him boarding a plane or something as a lookalike after having picked up Judith. Um, and then they refer to him as Mr. Nelson. So again, the phone goes silent at 1.56 on the 14th, and it stays silent until 1.32 a.m. on the 15th. Now, if you read the EMT Moline uh, records, a lot of the records start coming in at 1.16 a.m., so the line coming to life again at 1.32 a.m. on the 15th would be consistent with a second plane landing, um, as, which is what I explained here, the second plane. So here's Renville's records. There are more on my tele telecommunications links. I'll put links all in the comments. You guys can check it out for yourself. Um, I had to slice and dice for a factor of time here. Here's where the phone goes silent, 4-14-2016 at 1.56 and comes to life at 1.32 a.m. Um, also 4-15, um, it's said that Judith flies back with Prince and then goes and watch movies with him in the green room and then she takes a flight back to L.A. So this uh, Renville's phone stays consistently busy at those same times as if he was playing lookalike for at least somebody, Kirk or somebody. So not only that, not only are there different plane scenarios and different landings, you guys, different lookalikes. This plane landing that I'm talking about on the 13th, 14th, um, Josh and Hannah stated this, that when they went with him to the second to last show he did in Toronto, but Prince hadn't toured Toronto um, since 321. So when they were being interviewed, Nelson said, but you wouldn't go to these shows with him and they said no we went to Toronto with him Toronto we flew with him um to Toronto which is the second to last show he did so the second to last show would be a secret concert assumingly um and is what I'm saying in Toronto because they said they were on the plane now when asked about the plane landing they stumbled on all their words and replied that Kirk told them to land it it is never said that Kirk, Josh, or Hannah were on the same plane. And if you remember in part one when I mentioned there was passengers. So here Josh says, you know, Kirk had told us. And then Hannah pipes in to land it. Yeah, to land it because he wasn't himself and he wasn't responsive. And so um, when they landed in Moline, so then they're referencing another plane landing after saying they were just told to land it. So that's at least two plane landings, okay? Now, also, when Theo London is being interviewed um, by Justice Crew, he states at 2315 that he saw Prince with his own eyes on the plane with Judith. So that puts him on the plane at the same time. Now, I don't think we're talking about the 14th and 15th here. I think we're talking about the second to last, the secret flying around on the 13th and 14th. Uh, the media narrative, of course, is only that Judith, Prince, and Kirk were on the plane, but now we know that Hannah, Theo, Kirk, Judith, um, and also notice how when Josh is speaking um, that the paramedics came and got him. He's saying it as if he were there, mentioning that he snapped back into place. You see where uh, Josh says, yeah, Moline, Illinois, um, I guess they were, whatever you called it, got him for the IVs. 
Yeah, the paramedics came and got him, and he snapped back into place. And then within that, because when you fly a jet, you have to, like, if you land, I think you have to give them 12 hours. Give the crew 12 hours before they fly again, so you have to find another plane to get back. So that's what I was mentioning earlier. So now, listen, we have allegedly Kirk, Judith and Prince who boarded the plane in St. Paul okay but we also have Josh and Hannah saying they were on the plane um Theo London said he was on the plane and also I can't find it right now but Chris Gaither stated that he told Phaedra or somebody else saw him with their own eyes um so when I mentioned in part one that there was passengers on the plane also the DEA comes in and questions later and it says that the officers boarded the plane um one particular officer spent 20 minutes with the passengers and 10 minutes with who they allege is prince nelson um and it's alleged that that prince had an oxygen mask on their face and was being tended now this is that's only one of the plane landings um so if josh confirmed that they had to wait for another plane as the pilots had been flying for over 12 hours, which would be consistent with Judith and Kurt flying on the 13th and drug seeking. Why then does NBC News report the same plane departed? Because it says here, flight records show that the same plane departed Moline at 11.57 a.m. and arrived back to the Twin Cities at 12.45. Then it says the flight took off at 12.51 a.m. April 15th and according to records began an unscheduled landing in the Moline Airport at 2.01 a.m., but I've shown you guys before, as part of the paperwork, the EMT calls started coming in at 1.16, so it's just not consistent with what the media is reporting on NBC News. Now, Schulenberg, he had said the same thing that Josh and Hannah say, that this prince that had had this landing was given unnamed IV fluids and snapped back into place. He said, I... The uh, officer Nelson said, I didn't hear anything about the emergency landing. And, and Schulenberg says, oh, yeah, he was flying back from Atlanta, okay, and had an emergency landing in Illinois and was in an ER for three hours to get uh, IV fluids. They never say what the fluids are. I'm suggesting that the fluids are Narcan. Anyway, uh, again, there's Theo stating at 2315 that he saw Prince with his own eyes. He was on the plane. Now, all of these statements are extremely different from what Judith Hill testifies to. And if you go watch the video in particular where I talk about Judith Hill and other witnesses, um, I get very, very detailed into what she had to say. And she made it sound like the prince that she was with died right there on the plane that day.